Ladies and gentlemen, here's my mommy and daddy from the FM Club. When you walk the street, hold your head up high. Wear a chintzy suit with an expensive tie. Tails and top hat. If you drink cheap wine, use a champagne glass Tell them it's gold if you've got the brass Anything goes when you've got your ascot out You gotta have class You gotta have class Even if you got gas You gotta have your pinky out when you hold your tea. Use four-letter words, then say, pardon me. It's a shock to learn that anyone can be a snob. Don't be friendly, don't be sincere. Just check your tan and act austere. They'll never guess if you're a peer or a slob. You gotta have class You gotta have class You gotta be crass You gotta have class Good afternoon, ladies. Our guest today is a gentleman farmer. Now, in the past, the term gentleman farmer has always had a clouded and confused meaning, and I'm sure that after the show today, it will have no meaning at all. <clears throat> Our guest's name is Earl Loveduck. Welcome, Mr. Loveduck. Thank you. Actually, it's Lord Loveduck, but I certainly don't mind being an Earl. I understand, Earl, <laughs> that you are a bona fide member of the nobility. Yes, that's, that's very true, Miss Smith. Uh, there's no question that my mother was a dame, and my father was a very powerful peer. But uh, why would a sophisticated dignitary like yourself take up farming? Well, there was a group of us at the academy who felt that the agricultural field could use a little cultivation. Uh, a, little, a little elegance, a little gentility, perhaps. Uh, more or less a haute manure kind of a thing. Uh, Mr. Lovedat, could you tell us a little bit about your farm? Well, I'd certainly love to. I'm not here to discuss my gloves. The, uh, the estate itself... Did you... Oh, excuse me a minute. Um, maybe we could turn this... The estate itself is, is named Wuthering Flies. Uh, there are several edifices on the property, the main one being the manor house, which of course houses all manner of beings. We have a large wooden structure, which we have renamed the Cow Hostel, and of course quite an attractive swine cabana. Now the property itself covers 450 acres. We have, it's a very funny property. We have uh, 20 acres which is a, a, a lovely forest, very, very beautiful forest. I believe they're all rare deciduous arbors. And then we have 30 acres, which we have designated as cattle cafeteria. <laughs> and then the remaining 400 acres, of course, is where we grow our crop, which is <coughs> parsley. I see. And do you mean to tell us 
Do you mean, you mean to tell us that you actually get involved with the farm work? Huh. Well, this is an interesting point, and I certainly uh, admire your skepticism, particularly when you're wearing a wig. <laughs> but uh, many, of the, many of the farmers in our community even have, have told me right to my face, uh, or the shorter ones told me whatever they could reach. But what they have said is that they felt I was as useless as mammary glands on the male of the bovine species. But the truth is, I'm in there pitching. Why, at, at, at harvest time, my chauffeur takes me out on the tractor, and we watch that big machine make those tiny little bundles of parsley. And it's, it's done with class. Uh -huh. uh, even at milking time, uh, I bring the cows in, offer them a glass of wine, maybe a dance or two, and then I milk them. It's, it's done with class. It, it's not just a, a sudden how about it and a quick grab from a cold hand. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Loveduck. It's been, well, it's been... Would you, would you maybe say that it's, it's, it's been a harrowing experience? Thank you, Mr. Loveduck, and good afternoon, ladies. Would you like a, a glass of wine? No. These are really ugly. Who's your special wine? You gotta have class You gotta have class Even third will pass As long as it's class Thank you, and speaking of class, please welcome Graham House.
in here. I guess you can uh, kind of tell it's uh, hunting season right up here at the lodge, right? The right uh, oh, for Going up, I must have run the other way. Uh, it's hunting season up here, and uh, you know a lot of the guys are out there right now trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to, <coughs> giving a shot at it, uh, getting, uh, getting a couple of deer, you know, so they can, uh, they can pull out of here on Sunday night with a couple of hundred pounds of venison, you know, take her on home there and uh, give it all to the brother-in-law, and of course he'll freeze it all up and then throw it in the garbage. And uh, believe me, that's where I'd like to be myself. But I thought that it was more important here that uh, I take a couple of minutes and uh, talk, just uh, talk, uh, <coughs> talk about uh, gun safety. Uh, because, uh, well, personally, I don't, I don't see how you can be safe uh, without a gun. Um, I guess the uh, most important thing about uh, gun uh, safety is uh, try to keep your gun uh, clean and dry. Or, uh, at the very least, dry. Uh, the firing chamber now is uh, this a chamber there where the firing is done. Uh, it's called something. It's called the boss's office. But uh, in a gun, it's a firing chamber, and uh, uh, you get corrosion and dirt and sometimes a cheese sandwich in there. And uh, uh, really, uh, the best way to keep that clean is, of course, to store the gun with a with a bullet uh, right in there. Just put the bullet in there. Uh, here's something I can warn you about, uh, Stinky Peterson. And also, uh, don't hang loaded guns on the fireplace. See, these are not loaded back here. We used to keep them loaded up, and then, uh, geez, last fall, you know, someone uh, <coughs> someone came in here with an emergency case, and we, and we, of course, we drank it. And uh, we had a big fire going, you know, and the chimney got kind of hot, and the gall darn guns blew the drapes off. So it was, uh, geez, it was a heck of a time in here. But uh, another thing, too, is uh, one of the problems with storing them like that is when you get a gun out, uh, you don't know if it's loaded or not, and uh, the best way to check for that, of course, is to uh, just take a shot at something you don't really care about. Uh, be careful on the tar on the tar on the what you choose to shoot at, though. Uh, last fall, now Moose Thompson, he picked a target. It was about uh, ten feet in front of him. Uh, I think it was a boulder. Yeah, it was a boulder. Yeah, and uh, geez, he got her dead center. Oh, fantastic shot. Moose isn't bad from ten feet. Uh, his wife, he needed to go a little farther back, but ten feet he can hit most anything. And uh, unfortunately, he killed the, he killed the boulder, and uh, he took most of it home in his leg. Uh, then the next day, uh, Junior Singleton. Now he was out, and uh, he shot a tree, and the darn thing fell on him. So uh, just be careful on on the target that you pick. Uh, another thing too is, uh, I guess just one last thing is uh, the farmer's fence. Uh, you know, you're we're out there hunting and. Uh, come to a farmer's fence and it's very dangerous to, uh, to climb a, a farmer's uh, fence or anything, climb anything of a farmer's really with a with a loaded gun, but uh, especially a farmer's fence. And in fact, what we do is we all just uh, hop in the jeep and uh, drive right through the sucker, you know. <laughs> farmer gives you any hassle, just uh, shoot one of his cows. Anyway, uh, oh geez, I see it's time for me to be uh, saving up for a watch here. Uh, I guess... Uh, uh, the boys are going to be coming, busting in here, uh, looking for supper, so I'd, uh, I guess I'd better go find the bottle opener. I'll just say, take her easy, and keep your stick on the ice. Is it a gun you've got there? It is kind of a gun. I have a, I have a product here for Red Green. I bought it for him when I was out doing my weekly shopping. This is a, <laughs> this is a bug gun. I don't like to endorse too many products, but, uh, we certainly won't endorse this one. No, I, it's, it's actually it's really fun. And what it is, they have a string here tied to the gun, you see. And if you have a fly or anything, you can just shoot it. Watch, I'll show you. See that plant right there? And it's just, I mean, isn't that fun? And it's great at the supper table because you can shoot at your kids, you know. And you don't have to kill them or anything. You just a little maiming. Eat that potato. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take that hat off, you know. It's a, it really is a lot of fun. If you you see are a these, strange person. You should buy one of these, really. They're great. And it's got fly facts on it. <laughs> Speaking of fly facts. <laughs> Don't shoot that at me when Take I Take that jacket off, will you, please? Wonder. She always stays clothes off when she sings, so <laughs> it's lots of fun. Here's more I to sing Somebody's Love. <laughs> Somebody to love, don't you need somebody to love? 
this week at the Comedy Club to see Peter Wildman. Thank you. How's everyone tonight? Hi. Yeah, we're Canadian. <laughs> it's not always that easy, though. You know, Canadians no longer have the control over things that we used to have. We, we don't control the interest rates, inflation, Peter Law, he, they're all out of control. <laughs> and a lot of people are having trouble coping. Now, I've come up with some exercises that are going to help us all cope with the frustrations of life. I call them exercises in futility, okay? <laughs> now... Our first exercise in futility is going to be running on the spot. So let's everybody go. Here we go. Get those knees up good and high. On this futile. I mean, you're working up a real spot. You're going absolutely nowhere. Another great little exercise in futility is making little X's with your hands. So let's all make little X's, everyone. This is called voting NDP. Futile. Another great exercise in futility, very popular one this time of the year. We're going to take our left arm, wrap it around our tummy, and every now and then groan and slap your forehead, okay? So here we go. Oh! 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 This is called cheering for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Exercises in futility include mailing an important letter and hope it gets there on time, <laughs> finding a job, or even paying off your charge exits. It's all futile. <laughs> now, next week when I come back, I don't want you to get out of bed, don't lift anything heavy, and don't talk to strangers, because next week, we're exercising caution. Bye now. Thank you. Cause we don't really wanna go 